Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. Today we're going to talk about goats. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why I think goats are a great option for a small farm, what you need to get started raising them, what you need to know when you go shopping for your first goats, and how to take care of them once you get them home. And stay tuned to the end of the video to meet our brand new baby goats. So the first reason to get goats is because they're so personable. They're super trainable, they make great pets. It really doesn't take much more than a few treats and some nice scratches to make them your friend. And once they're trained, I can let them out of their fence, I can go on walks with them through the woods, I can get them onto a milk stand anytime I need to milk them or trim their hooves. And they're just super fun. They all have their individual personalities. <laughs> Sometimes they can be naughty, right? <laughs> That's not yours. That's not yours. So they can definitely be naughty, but that behavior normally manifests when they're bored. So we try to combat that by rotationally grazing them through our wooded areas so they have plenty of browse to pick through. We also will let them out of their fence and take them in walk on walks through the woods in areas that are really difficult for us to get these electric netting fences set up in. And of course, if they have any kind of stump or fallen tree to play on, that's always a bonus. And that leads me to another reason I think goats are a great option for a small farm. In my opinion, they truly are a multi-purpose animal. I originally got just a few goats to help clear some brush, and they have definitely helped us expand our wooded area into more grassy pasture or silvopasture areas. They've beat back a lot of the poison ivy and the invasive weeds, and they've just made getting around our property a lot more manageable. They've also taken advantage of a lot of the vegetation that my sheep or pigs aren't going to, which is really about half of the land that we occupy here. I do milk my Nubians, so we get all our dairy that way. And then of course we're raising the boar or boar crosses for meat. And although that's not their primary purpose, I love just hanging out with the goats. They're definitely pets as well. They you can also show goats and they're a really popular option for 4-H kids. Goats are also a great animal to have around if you're gonna have visitors on your farm. We've hosted events such as goat yoga and they're super popular. It's one of the number one things that customers ask is if they can come and pet and visit with my goats. Also, goats come in a variety of breeds. They come in a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes. You can get little Nigerian dwarfs that are so cute and come in beautiful colors. They're great milkers. You can have them in a very small area like a backyard. This is Gwen, she's one of my Nubians and Nubians are a dairy breed and they're quickly becoming one of my favorites. <laughs> They produce a really high butterfat milk. They have really easy to milk udders and they're super friendly and they make super cute babies. We cross our dairy goats like the Nubians with a meat breed known as boar. We've also used Kikos, I like both of those. <laughs> Which means our weathers or our male kids make for good meat goats once they're full grown. There's goats that excel as pack goats. There's goats that are really high milk producers. And of course, there's the really meaty breeds like the boar, the Kiko, or the Spanish. So once you've decided that you do want goats, you need to ask yourself, what, what purpose are you getting them for? Do you want them for milk? Then you should go for a dairy breed like a Nubian or a Nigerian dwarf. If you're just trying to produce some good meat, boars are a great option. <laughs> if you want a pet, any goat that's been raised to be friendly will make a great one. If you're looking to show, you're gonna to wanna to go to a show breeder. And if you're just looking for brush control, well, the options are pretty much endless. Now, before you jump online and start shopping for your first goat, there's a few things that you're gonna to wanna to have in place. The number one thing that you need is really secure fencing. We've opted to go with these portable electric net from Premier One. They've worked out really well for us. The key is to keep them really highly electrified. 
And we do that with solar chargers that have a really good solid ground to them. Pretty much within minutes of this fence being unelectrified, if they're bored, they're gonna get out. And they get out sometimes, even when it's electrified, they just find places where there's a dip in the ground and they'll slip under. But the nice thing about my goats, at least, is that they're really trained, so they're super easy to catch if that ever happens. You wanna be careful with some fencing, such as welded wire, if it's big enough for them to get their head through then if goats have horns, they are likely to get their head stuck and not be able to pull it back out once they're done eating on the other side. You should also decide if you want goats with horns or not, if that's something that you're willing to deal with. Now, goats do regulate their body temperature through their horns. It also allows them to defend themselves and work out the pecking order with other goats in their herd. So we've opted to leave the horns on these goats, but there are a few options. You can buy a breed that is pulled, that naturally doesn't have horns, or from a line of goats that is likely not to have horns, although there's still a risk sometimes, especially if you end up breeding those goats to others that may not be pulled. Or you can dehorn them when they're babies. And it's not a practice that we're really fond of. So we've just decided to manage our goats in a way that allows them to keep their horns. Some of them we bought and they were already dehorned, but going forward, that's not our practice with our babies. You also need to have your feeding plan in place. That way you can buy goats that are being fed and managed in the way that you intend to when you bring yours home. We rotationally graze our goats through wooded areas so that they can eat browse. In the winter when the browse gets too thin to support them, we supplement them with hay. We will also give them a little bit of spent brewer's grain, sometimes some alfalfa pellets, as well as some black oil sunflower seeds. When I'm milking my does on the stand, I will give them typically a mixture of all of these. And if they need some extra calories, I'll add a goat dairy ration of sweet feed. Now goats don't need a tremendous amount of water, but they do need access to clean, fresh water every day. That's something that a lot of people don't think about when they're talking about grazing goats through the woods. So you need to think about the, those hard to get to areas and how you're gonna get water there. Goats typically don't wanna get their feet wet, so they're not as apt to utilize a pond or a stream. And that's generally not a good idea anyway because you don't want to contaminate natural water sources with animal feces. So you need to think about how to get hoses or haul buckets of water into the woods for your goats. Our goats get by with pretty minimal shelter for most of the year. In the winter, we do usually put them in an area where they can get inside a barn. There's a couple of reasons for that. That's typically when we do our kidding. So the babies are being born and we want the moms to have a dry, warm place to have their babies. Also, we're feeding a lot of hay, so that gives us a place to keep our hay undercover and dry. Goats really don't like to get wet, and they really, really don't like to get wet and cold. They don't have the thickest coats. They will get a winter coat to some degree, but having a place to get out of the wind and out of the rain is a really nice thing, especially in the winter. Through the spring and summer, we just try to make sure that they have shade trees around and that's not a problem when we're grazing them through the woods. If you plan to have baby goats or you're putting your goats in very remote areas, you're gonna wanna think about predator protection. Keeping a really hot fence is one way to protect them. Also, guardian dogs are a really great option. Do you need to train them not to attack your goats? Some dogs have more prey drive than others, so you wanna make sure it's a properly trained livestock guardian dog, but these little guys are vulnerable to things like coyotes and black bears. The first thing to remember when you go shopping for goats is that you're gonna need more than one. These are herd animals. They're gonna be miserable if you just bring home one, even if you give it tons of attention and treat it like your baby, like your pet. It's gonna get out of the fence and it's gonna go looking for other goats. So you need to get at least two, preferably a small herd, like three or four. You wanna know what you're looking for before you go shopping. Goats are really cute and if you go look at the wrong ones, they're likely to win you over and then you're gonna end up with a goat that you didn't really want. 
Decide what the right goat is for you and stick to those. Decide about what type of breed, what purpose you want them for, and whether you want them to have horns. The best way to start is not to jump right into breeding. That can have a lot of complications. And if you're still learning, you don't want to take on too much all at once. My advice is to get a couple nice little weanlings, probably some weathers to start with, that means castrated males, and just raise them up. If you want a dairy goat, get a, an experienced goat that has a baby by her side already and is in milk. Then you can learn to milk with a goat that's already experienced being milked and has manners on the milk stand. Choose healthy goats from a breeder that you can trust. Even better, somebody that will become a mentor to you. Somebody that you can call when you have those inevitable emergencies. Once you get your goats home, how do you care for them? Well, nutrition is number one. Goats are ruminants, so they can really survive on just browse alone. They will eat pasture, they will eat grass, but they prefer leafy greens or weeds over just straight grass. And they do like hay. They tend to waste a lot of their hay, but they will eat it. You can also supplement with grain or alfalfa. You wanna be careful with males. If their calcium phosphorus ratio is out of sync in their diet, they can develop urinary stones and that could be really painful. It can even be deadly. They can be a little bit picky when it comes to food. If it's on the ground, especially if there's already poop there, they're probably not gonna eat it. You also wanna provide your goats with a good free choice mineral. Since we also have sheep on the property, we provide our goats with an all purpose mineral that does not contain copper. Now goats do need copper, but it is toxic for sheep. So just to be safe, we just feed them both the same all purpose mineral that does not contain copper. And then once or twice a year, we give our goats what's called a copper bolus, where we give them a little pill that has tiny little copper wires and that slowly releases enough copper into their gut to give them that trace amount that they need in their diet. If your goats are low on copper, you can usually tell because their coats will get a little bit scruffy and they just won't thrive as well. That copper bolus can also help them fight off internal parasites, which is one of the biggest things that you need to be aware of when raising goats. Just like sheep, they're very susceptible to parasites and they pick those up while they're grazing off the ground. Now, if your goat is not gaining weight, is standing off, acting sluggish or away from the herd, if they're not eating as vigorously as they normally would, or if they start to look pale, or if they have any kind of diarrhea, you're gonna wanna check them for worms. The best way to do that is with an actual fecal test. You can take a poop sample to your local veterinarian and get those done pretty cheaply. Also, there's labs that you can send them out to. Here, I actually have a microscope and a simple setup where I can do that myself. Once you determine the species of parasite and the level of infection, you can choose the right dewormer to help your animal. It's good to have either oral or injectable vitamin and mineral supplements on hand if they need a little extra support. Goats definitely need some hoof maintenance. We trim ours at least twice a year and honestly, they could probably use it more. It is a little bit of a labor intensive chore, but if you have a milking stand and you have them trained to stand on it, it can be a one person operation. Goat's feet can actually be pretty sensitive. So if you see them limping or if they're going down on their knees to eat, then you definitely wanna check their hooves. And my top tip is to take the time to observe your goats. Know what's normal for them. Get to know their individual personalities and preferences and attitudes. And then you'll know quicker when something is wrong. And if you can deal with a problem as soon as it arises, you're far more likely to have a better outcome. This girl in front of me right here, you can see has a huge belly and a big old udder. So she's about to give birth any day now. So we are really watching her extra close. Now, if you want milk from your goats, you're gonna have to breed them. To get started, you can definitely buy a doe that's already in milk, but at some point she's gonna dry up and she's gonna need to be rebred. The logistics of having a buck in your herd can be a little bit challenging. Sometimes they can be aggressive, they get really stinky, and you're probably gonna wanna separate them from your does at some point during the year. The nice thing about goats is that it can be pretty easy to actually find a buck to rent. You can either drop off your females at a different farm or bring the buck to your farm for a few days. It's not that hard to detect when your females are coming into heat, so you can just plan to put them together for those few days and you're likely to have your girl bred without having to maintain a buck for the whole year. If you are gonna have babies, have a plan for what you're gonna do with them. Are you gonna sell them 
as weanlings? Are you gonna raise the females to be does themselves? And what about the males? Are you gonna castrate them or sell them as little bucklings? In my opinion, only the best animals should be kept for breeding. So that means that you're gonna castrate most of your males and then you're gonna have weathers. And those are good for a couple of things. They can make great pets. They can make good buddies for your buck when he's separated. They're still great for brush control. And of course, what we do with our weathers is produce them for meat. Now goats take a little bit longer than a sheep to finish. So if you wanna have a really good meaty carcass on those boys, you're gonna to wanna to raise them to about 18 months. I originally got into goats just for brush control. And then I quickly decided that I wanted to raise some for meat. I really love the taste of goat meat. I've always been a fan of lamb and it is very similar, but it has its own quality and it's just so good and so nutritious. And then I got into dairy. So now I re have a really diverse herd and I like it that way. It's, it's a lot of fun to try out different breeds. Eventually I will probably narrow down. I really like the Nubians and I really like the Kikos and I like the crosses between those. But we're still figuring it out and that's okay. They're just a joy to have around. Sabrina, what you got over here? So this beautiful lady is Sabrina and she is our herd boss. And last night she gave us these two little beautiful babies. One little boy with the brown head and the all white little girl. And they're doing great. Little baby coats are definitely the most fun part. Right, mama? I know, mama. You did so good. You did so good. So if you're thinking about getting into goats, I really hope this helped you. Thanks for watching guys. And if you'd like to see the difference in how we raise our sheep, check out this video right here. Bye.